press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. NDS 37 is also applicable to an onerous contract. Once you come to a conclusion that your contract has become onerous, and of course those three basic conditions which are laid down in NDS 37, if all those basic conditions are getting fulfilled, you can definitely recognize a provision for an onerous contract. The question that arises is that what do we exactly mean by an onerous contract? Now, an onerous contract is a contract where your committed costs exceed the benefits. See, whenever you are executing a contract, obviously you will be incurring certain expenses. But the reason why we are incurring these expenses is because we are very confident that the revenue that we are going to earn will be more than the committed cost and ultimately the contract will result into a gain for us. So that is the only reason that we are executing a contract because we are seeing profit potential in those contracts. But the moment you come to the conclusion that if you will execute the contract then the cost will be more than the benefit. In other words, this is a contract which will result into a loss. We consider that contract to be an onerous contract. For example, let's take an example and understand it. Let us say you are entering into a contract. The contract is for supply of 1 lakh units. Let us say at the rate rupees 100. When you, are, uh, when you are signing this particular contract, at that time, your production cost per unit, let's say is turning out to be 70 rupees. So you will be producing something at 70 which you will be able to sell for 100. So you are seeing a profit potential of 30 rupees per unit over here. So naturally since I am saying profit potential I will like to execute this contract. The Once we start manufacturing we realize that all of a sudden the cost of the raw materials and labor and everything has increased to such an extent that your production cost per unit has now increased to rupees 110. So if you are executing this contract, then you will produce something at 110 and you will have to supply that at rupees 100. So you realize that this contract will result into a loss per unit of rupees 10. Multiplied by the number of units, ultimately you conclude that you will suffer a loss of 10 lakhs of rupees, isn't it? So we can say that this contract has become an onerous contract now. See, you have entered into a binding contract for sale. You have already promised your client that I will supply 1 lakh units at 100. At that time it was making sense because my production cost was under rupees 100. So I was seeing profit potential. We signed the contract and unfortunately for us the cost spiral up in such a way that the contract which was going to result into a gain is now producing a loss of rupees 10 lakhs. Your committed costs are now exceeding the benefits. I will consider this as an onerous contract. In the contract, there is no clause where I can increase the selling price. It is simply not possible. The selling price has got fixed at rupees 100. So there is no scope of increasing the selling price. So I have another choice. I may simply set aside the contract. I will tell the other party that sorry, this is not possible for me. I am setting aside the contract. If you are setting aside the contract, there is a penalty clause in the contract. The penalty clause is that in case if you are setting aside the contract, you will have to pay a penalty of rupees 2 lakhs. So you have a choice now. Either you pay a penalty of rupees 2 lakhs and free yourself from this contract or you execute the contract. But if you execute the contract, you are going to suffer a loss of 10 lakhs. Obviously, you will like to pay the penalty and set aside the contract. This penalty that you are going to pay, you ought to recognize a provision for the same. This is nothing but a provision for an onerous contract. Let's take one more example and understand this particular concept even better. Let's take one more example.
let us say you have entered into a lease agreement or a lease contract, whatever you say. So we have a lease agreement and this lease agreement is for office premise and it is for a non-cancellable period of five years. So we have taken an office premise on rent for a period of five years, but the lease agreement is very clear. This period of five years is non-cancellable. Non-cancellable means I cannot cancel this contract till the lease period does not come to an end. Let us say after two years, let's say after two years, we are ourselves purchasing an office premise other than this, of course. So we buy another office premise and as we relocate from the leased property to the owned property. Now there is no need for me to continue my occupation of the leased property. I have myself purchased another property. So it's very natural that I will now like to uh, say relocate to that new property. So there is still a period of three years left as you can observe. You have entered into a non-cancellable lease for five years. After two years, you are shifting to a new property. There is still a non-cancellable period of three years left. The lesser makes it very clear to me that, see, even though you are not using this property, still you have to continue to pay the lease rent for another three years. So, I am not occupying the property. If I am not occupying the property, that means I am not enjoying any benefit of the property. In spite of not enjoying the benefit of the property, there is a committed cost of the lease rent for the rest of the three years. I even tell the lesser that is it possible that I sublease it to someone. But the lease agreement is also very clear that this lease agreement cannot be subleased. So just see the situation in which you are caught over here. What's the situation here? Try to understand. I have moved away to another property. I am not enjoying any benefit of this office premise, but still I am paying the lease rent for the remaining three years. I can say that this contract has become an onerous contract. Why onerous contract? Because I have a committed cost of paying the lease rent for the next three years without enjoying any benefit. Earlier I was using the property and hence I was paying the lease rent. Now I am not using the property and still I am paying the lease rent. And that is the reason I will consider this as an onerous contract. What is the requirement of NDS 37 over here? The moment you conclude that this contract has become onerous, you will have to recognize a provision. Please understand, in the case that we are discussing, you will recognize a provision and you will recognize provision for the lease rent of all the subsequent three years together. Right, you will not recognize lease rent only for the next year. You are going to suffer a loss for the next three years. So find out what is the lease rent. That lease rent will be multiplied by three years. So that will give us the total amount of lease rent. Yes, you can carry out discounting over here because the time value of money is material. So yes, you can carry out a discounting of the provision. Right. So what I will do is for the next three years, I'll find out what is the lease rent that I'm going to pay. Time value of money is material over here. So I will discount it. And I will find out what is the present value. Whatever final answer I am getting, that is going to be the provision for the onerous contract. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.